Hi, I'm Liz Whiteacre, and today we're going to talk about sandwiches to and effective essay development. This week's objective is in the course as you are developing your larger research narrative is to understand why summary and short quotes are often more effective than block quotes in your writing. We'll explore techniques to integrate uh, small quotes into your sentences and tips for citing them in MLA, as well as how you can create sentence variety by using different in-text citation strategies and thinking about how you're developing your paragraphs using sandwich methods. We'll also talk about that important warrant and why explaining why you're putting in source material helps your readers understand what it is you're trying to teach them about your message. When you're thinking about choosing summary or short quotes, so rather than like a big paragraph from a source, kind of breaking in and picking out just what you need or summarizing that big paragraph, the pros of that either summary or short quotes help clarify why the source material is being used rather than saying, hey, read these couple paragraphs from this source I read and then coming back to your discussion later on. If you're taking kind of shorter snippets and discussing why those things are significant throughout, your readers understand why it is you're sharing this material with them. It also helps integrate other people's ideas and voices into your own more seamlessly. They demonstrate your understanding of the source material. If you can read a five page article and say, well, the main points are A, B, and C, and use those points in your paper, it's very clear to your readers that you understand what the original source was talking about versus taking a big paragraph, pasting it in, putting some quotes around it and saying, well, there you go. And then going back to whatever it is you wanna talk about. Sometimes it's not always clear what that information is doing there. And finally, they help preserve your own text, voice, and style. So as you're writing your paper, kind of in small ways, integrating your source material helps you maintain your voice so it sounds like you throughout the essay. If all you have is like a topic sentence, big quote from somebody else, a topic sentence, big quote from somebody else, it sounds like they're jumping around all over the place sometimes and readers can sometimes lose track of what the conversation is about. Some of the cons, right, there are times when you definitely want to use longer quotes. Um, short quotes can help break up a longer text, but sometimes you need that bigger idea or the whole point of your paper is to analyze a chunk of text. So you really need to present it to your readers in full before you can read about it. And sometimes summary is not appropriate if you're looking at the original source and you think there is no way <laughs> I can put that into my own words, right? You've kind of zoomed in, you want this one idea. Um, so that might be a better opportunity to use the short quote or the longer quote. Um, summary sometimes works better when maybe you're summarizing a whole paragraph rather than trying to summarize one sentence. I'd like to introduce this idea of quote sandwiches. And I like this visual aid because it helps remind me when I'm composing, anytime I'm bringing in source information, that I need to do more than just say, here you go, right? I have these different ingredients and just say, help yourself too. And I'm gonna throw some of this and some of this, some of this and you know, make your own sandwich. Instead, I wanna do that work for my readers so that I know exactly what I'm presenting them is what they see, what they, get, right? You can make a lot of different things out of, you know, some bread and some innards and some sauces and such and lettuce. People will come up with all different ways of using those ingredients. So craft it yourself. When you're thinking about a quote sandwich, um, kind of the, the top bun or that bread would be introducing your quote, saying something that says, why are we about to look at this Thing, right? Kind of announcing the topic. And then in that center, integrating, right? Citing the, the quote and presenting that material to your readers. And then that bottom bun is always making sure that as you're kind of leaving the quote and going back to your discussion, that you're explaining why the quote connects to your claim, 
why it connects to other pieces of evidence that you might just have shared, and perhaps why it connects to the greater discussion, right? Kind of taking that sandwich and suggesting why it connects back to that thesis statement. Here's an example of it in action. And I'm gonna read this because I appreciate the text might be a little bit small on the screen. But if you see here, right? I tried to, whoops, I tried to use the color so that you could see the green and the green, we get our two buns. And then the black text there is our uh, guts of the sandwich. So introducing my quote, understanding effective ways to integrate sources is important for student success. So I plan to focus on developing materials designed to help. Right? So I'm letting you know, what is it I'm about to be talking about? Now I'm going to integrate not one, but two short quotes. Researchers with the Writing Institute, Green and Shu, suggest, quote, students respond best to hands-on practices, end quote. And Smith et al. have found that, quote, interactive inquiry focuses activities. Interactive inquiry focused activities are successful, end quote, in the student population they worked with at a Midwestern writing center. I'm going to now explain why I just told you that information. The time I spend on developing course materials that encourage students to practice source integration seems worth it. Students will be prepared to execute techniques effectively in their essays. So rather than just saying, here's this quote from Green and Chu, here's this quote from Smith, I'm making sure that I am you know, giving those ideas to you as a full meal, right, rather than piecemeal, if you will. You can also do this with summary, and the practice is just the same. We would introduce the summary, integrate and cite the summary, and then explain why the summary connects. Why did I just tell you what these other people said? A summary sandwich might look like this, and you'll notice that I'm using the same text, but instead of quotation, I'm choosing to summarize the main point of the article that I want to share with my readers. So I'm going to introduce my summary. Understanding effective ways to integrate sources is important for student success, so I plan to focus on developing materials designed to help. Now I'm going to integrate and cite my summary. Researchers with the Writing Institute, Green and Shu, discovered students achieve goals when they practice skills in low stakes situations. And when Smith et al. studied a student population at a Midwestern writing center, that activities engage students and get them asking questions worked best. Now I'm going to explain why I just told you this. The time I spent on developing course materials that encourage students to practice source integration seem worth it. Students will be prepared to execute techniques effectively in their essays. So that kind of shows you side by side those two different techniques of the short quote and summary together. As you are integrating your materials um, into your discussion from various sources, and some of these might also be digital or audiovisual ones, it's important to think about how you're constructing your text. I know sometimes students will not be inclined to put in a citation because they say, well, in this paragraph, it's just, you know, parenthetical, parenthetical, like every single sentence is a parenthetical citation. And if that's the case, that's good. <laughs> One, that you're making sure to cite all summary and quotation, but it also lets you know that you've just kind of put the, um, veggie burger or you've just put the luncheon meat or if you just put the peanut butter on the counter and left people to their own devices. So that would signal to me as a writer that I need to take some time to introduce that material from the sources and also explain the connection. I'm showing you this because I want you to learn this. So for that sentence variety, you can think about putting the MLA keyword, which will match up with the works cited page. So we're looking at either the author or author's last names or the first title listed, either in the sentence or in a parenthetical citation. You can also include credibility facts about a source like I did in my two sandwich examples, and that can help feel like every sentence isn't just the author said, quote, 
right? And then a parenthesis to citation at the end. You can also use varied sentence patterns. We've been experimenting with, say, the non-essential element, putting a, a non-essential phrase clause at the beginning of a sentence or inserting some information in between our subject and verb, etc. And so doing that as you're working with your source materials, making sure that you're excerpting them can be really helpful. Also mixing up your choices. Don't always quote, don't always summarize, right? So having some variety throughout your text is going to be noticed by your readers. And then also remember that you can excerpt a longer quote. You cannot change the meaning, so you can't take out something that you don't want your readers to know or change. But it's assumed that if you take the one sentence out of the paragraph that means the most to your readers and, you know, quoted that that sentence is coming from something larger. And perhaps if you want an idea from here and an idea from here, you might say, well, here's this smaller idea. Why? Here's this smaller idea. Why? Or you could also use the ellipse to represent that missing material in between sentence one and sentence three. Here are three different examples. So again, I'm still working with the material, the evidence from my two sandwiches earlier. And I just wanted to show you some of those different techniques in action. So these are all saying the same thing. They're just being presented in different ways using different uh, diction, different choices. So here we have researchers with the Writing Institute suggest, quote, students respond best to hands-on practice. And I'm choosing to put my keyword, I have two authors, so I'm including both of their last names. And I did have a page number there, page 34. This was a PDF. Um, so I know that that page is gonna be the same on everybody's. Um, I'm choosing to put it after the material that I've borrowed. I'm also joining it to my next sentence because I see a connection between these two ideas, even though they come from two different sources. So I have comma and, and this time I'm choosing to put the author. Um, at all is there because there were four authors and if I have three or more, I can use that Latin saying for, and all the other writers, um, just to be a little bit more, um, concise in my writing. And I've shared Smith et al. have found that quote, right, in the student population. Um, there's no page number there because this was an online article that didn't have page numbers. So I'm not putting at the end of the sentence any sort of number in parentheses. In the second example, I've chosen to take my keyword, which is the author's last names, and put it in the sentence. And rather than starting the sentence, letting you know that they're researchers with the Writing Institute, I'm creating that non-essential element here. So I have subject, comma, let me tell you a little bit about them, comma, and then my verb. Um, I'm ending here with the number 34 for the page, and it's by itself because again, um, right there, the, the author's last names are in the sentence, so I don't need to repeat that information. I'm moving straight to the next quote here. And that's something I wanna be mindful of that moving from a quote to a quote makes sense to my readers. Um, and I have included the name of the author and at all in my sentence. So I don't have that in a parenthetical at the end. And here's the last time I decided to flip flop those two pieces of information to see how they worked. So I'm starting with students at a Midwestern writing center who were studied, taught researchers that quote, interactive inquiry focus activities are successful. And this time I chose to put Smith et al in my parenthetical citation comma, and a study conducted by the Writing Institute by Green and Shoe suggests students respond best to hands-on practice, end quote, and we have our page citation. So as you can see, you have a lot of different um, options as you're building things. Um, and you should do what's clearest to your readers, you know, what sends your message the best. And you should have a little bit of fun in this big paper playing around, trying out different strategies, especially if they're ones you haven't used before, so that you can see what works and what you like and continue to develop your voice in this class while you, you have a safety net and you have a lot of people here to support you as you practice. 
before we end today, I want to make sure to make a connection <laughs> between our sandwiches and how they can help you chew or claim evidence warrant. We were looking at how we're using claim evidence and warrant um, in one small bit right with one piece of information and again as we've talked about throughout the course you can still use that same method when you're thinking about an entire paragraph right you start with your topic sentence or claim and then you might present evidence and warrants and claim and evidence you might have a, a couple stacked a real big Dagwood sandwich um, in that particular paragraph and then also thinking about your uh, whole essay right? You might start with just claims in your intro to let us know what you're talking about, but then you might kind of have a sandwich and a sandwich and a sandwich. It's a really big meal by the time we get to the end. So keep that in mind. Whenever you're sharing your idea, you can be backing it up with evidence. And anytime you back it up with evidence, you should be making it clear to your readers through an explanation of why that evidence is supporting your thought or illustrating it and, and what that connection is. Remember, writing is an act of teaching, and so every time you sit down to share your message with your audience, it's important to think about how you're, you're doing that. Looking ahead, we are working on our papers. If you have any questions as you draft, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We are nearing the end of the term, so not too much more to go. We're we'll finishing up our blog project, we'll be doing a peer review, and we will also be submitting this bigger research paper where you're sharing with us how you're changing the world and making a difference in people's or a person's life. I can't wait to see what you create. Take care and keep in touch.